Hello everyone, welcome to the cave. If you're like me, you're probably still recovering from the season 4 finale of Stranger Things, but if you haven't seen it yet, Buckle up, it's gonna be a bumpy one! Since season 5 is still two years away, I figured what better way to deal with my emotions than by building a tiny version of Hopper's cabin. I started by printing some references at scale. Luckily there were a lot of options to choose from because the cabin is actually an escape room just outside of Atlanta. So if you wanted to, you could get locked in the cabin just like Eleven was in Season 2. Just without a helicopter mom hopper trying to keep your existence secret. Now that we have our references, it's time to start building. I'm using dollar store foam board for the bones of this building because it's budget friendly and super easy to work with. Just make sure you use a new craft blade for those crisp cuts. I put the reference photo on top of one of the walls and using a pen I poked holes around the door and the windows to act as a guide for cutting them out. Perfect. I constructed this cabin carcass using copious amounts of hot glue and countless fingertip burns. Using some hot glue, I started gluing some coffee sticks to the outside of the foam board. These sticks are the perfect width to mimic the wood paneling on the actual cabin. I used a pair of nippers to trim the ends. Just be careful, because sometimes the sticks can turn into deadly projectiles. Whoops. I cut a few extra windows out using my craft blade. Let's speed this process up a bit. I used a smaller coffee stick to cover this unsightly seam. It was about this time I realized I completely forgot this little offshoot of the cabin. I roughly sketched the size I wanted onto a piece of paper and then transferred it to some foam board. Much better, just need some wood. I used some PVA glue to glue some small sticks to a bit of paperboard I scavenged from a soda box. Then I can cut out some panels and stick them straight on the house. This process is prone to warping, so make sure to use a heavy object to weigh it down while it dries. Use a bit of telekinesis to apply the wood walls. Now cut a hole out for the window, even though it would have been way easier to do before gluing everything together. Speaking of windows, let's make some. I started by cutting up an old takeout container. This material is great for making fake glass, and best of all, it's free. I first learned this method of window making from Stutzen over at Stutzen Studios. He's an absolute junk genius, and this video honestly wouldn't exist if it wasn't for him paving the way. I'll leave a link in the description, so make sure to go check him out. For this first window, I cut out a window-sized bit of plastic and laid it down on a bed of painter's tape to protect the cutting mat. Then I glued little bits of sticks doing my best to limit any overflow of the super glue. I cut up some small sticks into even smaller sticks and used them to create the grills of the window. Now this is a particularly fancy window and gets its own tin roof, so I built a frame to attach it to later. For all the other windows, I realized that it was much easier to just build them directly onto the plastic and then cut them out. I used the grid on the cutting mat to make sure everything was square. Just be careful because super glue and accelerant can make the plastic cloudy, but for my purposes I liked the effect because it made them look more weathered. For the porch I used more of the wood and paperboard paneling we made earlier and attached it to a bit of foam board using some hot glue. Then I framed it using some of the wider coffee sticks.
For the main supports of the porch, I'm using some balsa wood that I cut into little square beams. I use the small coffee sticks to create these cross supports for the railing. Stick alert. For the rails, we're gonna use some headless matchsticks. Now it's roof time. Use a bit of foam for the base and then reach for your nearest bag of cool branch Doritos. <laughs> it's so bad. This chip is a little too acute for my liking, so let's give it a quick haircut. Ah, much better. A little hot glue to tack it on. Pop out a little attic window. And you got some iconic Eddie Devil Horns. Big stick. I'm using a bit of recycled cardboard to make a cap for our cabin. Let's cut a small slot out to make room for the porch. Laying out some guidelines for placing some small bits of sticks to give the illusion of rafters. Before we glue the roof on, we need to cut a crude hole out where this spooky boy busted into the roof like the Kool-Aid man. I want to keep the roof detachable so that I can access the lights that I'll be adding to the ceiling later. I'm using some CA glue to attach the two parts of the roof. Let's use a few extra sticks to cover up any unsightly gaps. This piece will give a bit of a lip to the roof so that it doesn't slide around when it's on the cabin. Shingle time. I scavenged another soda box and used some scissors to cut the shingles using this grid as a guide. This process is fairly tedious, so let's see if we can speed it up a bit. I'm gluing the first strip down using some hot glue so that it acts as a strong foundation for the rest of the shingles. The rest of them will be adhered using PVA glue. I used the occasional dab of super glue for any stubborn ones that wanted to lift. This side was a bit trickier because of the hole, but I just did my best to work around it. I used a bit of leftover paperboard to cover the peak of the roof. I trimmed the shingles and used some coffee sticks to cover the exposed edge of the cardboard. I did the same thing about the rafters, these matchsticks just happen to be the perfect size. Now this was my favorite part of the build. This stuff is called corrugated paper and it's perfect for making miniature tin roofs. This is another craft hack I picked up from Stutson and was actually the inspiration for this whole build. I made sure to include some of the wear and tear that is found on the actual cabin. This isn't a factory fresh tin roof, it's tattered and torn from the test of time. This material is a little tricky to work with since it's literally paper thin, but the end result is totally worth it. Don't forget the fancy window. I used my finger to make some dents in the roof to mimic decades of damage from fallen tree branches. Now let's make the front door. I cut out a door shaped bit of balsa wood and marked the boundaries of the door frame. I drew the panels onto the door as a guide and used the corner of a ruler to sort of gouge in the pattern.
Let's look through my bitbox to see if we can find anything remotely doorknob shaped. This'll work. This is an extra ball joint from an old Gundam Helios kit. A little dab of super glue and the door's done. I removed the paper lining from the inside of the cabin and used the back of my tweezers to imprint some lines into the foam to give the impression of wood paneling. If you wanted to, you could go a step further and use a wire brush to scratch in some wood grain. No, my boy! Father help! I'm using some matte Mod Podge and nearly decade old black acrylic paint to make Black Magic Craft's signature concoction. We are there. I use the snarky symbiote to stiffen the tin roofs as well as seal in the foam for spray painting later. Let's do the same for the shingles. You can't have a porch without steps, so let's fix that. I started with an upside down L. Add a few more and you're nearly there. I glued them onto the porch using a healthy portion of CA glue. I sketched some guidelines onto another stick and cut it out to fill in this portion of the steps. Same thing for this side. For the railing, I'm using some more of the matchsticks. Let's use a coffee stick for this part. I cut everything at a slant so I can apply the handrail. Sneaky little matchstick for this gap. Trim the ends and repeat everything on the other side. Add a couple legs to the porch and the build is basically done. With the cabin complete, it's time to start building the base. I'm using some 1 inch XPS foam that I cut the size. The cabin is situated on a bit of a hill, so I used a smaller piece of foam to add some height. Let's cut a slant into the top piece of foam and then use some hot glue to join the two pieces. I'm mixing a batch of Sculptum Old to smooth the transition so it looks like a natural hill. We can seal in the edges as well as fill any gaps using a bit of modeling paste. For the surface of the base, I'm using a mixture of plaster, sand, and acrylic paint. This is an adaptation of a recipe I learned from watching Boy Like Hobby Time. He's a great artist and his videos are super relaxing, so make sure to go check him out. I'm pouring this forbidden peanut butter all over the base and using a paintbrush to push it around. While we let this dry, let's start painting the cabin. I primed everything with a Zenithal highlight to prep all the surfaces for painting. Let's use the iPad to pull up a picture of the cabin to use as a color reference. Images on the screen will always be more accurate than when printed. I chose matte craft paint to have a duller finish on the cabin. I started with a base coat of brown on all of the wood. This coat will sit in the nooks and crannies of the wood and act as shadows after we're done dry brushing. I kept the porch separate from the rest of the cabin just for painting all these hard to reach places. For the dry brushing, I went back and forth between a few muted earth tones until I achieved that dusty, dry rotted wood look. I did the same for the windows, doing my best to try and make it match the rest of the cabin. For the door, I used a crocodile green. Brock. For the roof, I did a base coat of black and a light gray dry brush to highlight the shingles. My favorite part about making windows is getting to take the masking off after painting. Oh yeah. 
Now that the windows are done, we finally get to attach them to the cabin. I'm dry brushing the base of the cabin to mimic the buildup of red clay. For all of the tin roof portions, I'm going to base coat it with a bit of Tamiya silver. This roof is especially rusty, so let's coat it with a mostly opaque layer of terracotta. A bit of greenish gray to add some grime. These two roofs are a bit newer, so let's start with some grime before we add the rust. Let's add some texture to this mixture by using a bit of sand. Sparingly spread this sand smoothie, making sure not to cover too much of the roof. With the painting done, I can finally glue the porch onto the rest of the cabin. I want this thing to light up as bright as a firework in the mouth of a mind flayer, so I'm packing this premises with the power of one... fairy light. But it's a strong fairy light. I'm gluing this light haphazardly across the entire ceiling. The aesthetic we're going for here is this beautiful interior design by Joyce Byers circa season 1. Nice. With the painting and the lights done, we can finally attach the cabin to the base. Let's water down a mixture of these three paints to make a clay colored wash. Let's apply this wash to the entire surface of the base. Then let's use a matte black for all of the edges. Rain time. Using a generous portion of PVA glue, I'm speckling these spaces with an assortment of stones I scavenged from my own backyard. A sprinkling of sand to fill in the gaps. Now let's use a hobby saw to cut the bottom off of this stick. A little hot glue to stick it on, and then I'm adding this stick as a little tree root. For the dirt, I'm using, well, dirt. I gathered this dirt from my yard, but any dirt will do. Just make sure to bake your dirt first if you don't want a bunch of creepy crawlies calling your cabin home. With that done, I added a few more rocks to add some variety to the dirt patches. Now this next part is super flocking fun. I bought this assorted pack of tiny leaves. Let's mix them together until we've got a fresh fall blend. Just a dash of green. I flocked these forbidden flakes over a pool of PVA glue. Let me know in the comments below if you pour your milk before or after your cereal. Much like this diorama, I pour my milk first. Don't forget to flock the roof of the cabin. I used some dry vine foliage to make these tiny bushes. Let's make a little log pile so the cabin looks lived in. Let's make Bob Ross proud and plant a few happy little trees. This stick was too thick to stick directly into the foam, so I used a dab of hot glue and a sprinkle of leaves to keep it in place. The rest of the sticks were thin enough to just shove straight into the foam with just a bit of hot glue to lock them in. And with that, the build is done. Wait, you can't have a cabin without a rickety screen door. A little bit of paint to match. Well, we made it. With that last piece in place, it's finally time for the beauty shots.
you made it this far, I just want to say a huge thank you. This is my first video on this channel, and I have a lot of fun projects in the works. If you want to join me on this adventure, hit the subscribe button. I'm super excited for what the future holds, and I can't wait to share it with all of you guys. Also, a huge shout out to my friends and family. I really couldn't have done this without everyone's overwhelming support. Love you guys.